This morning we have with us Cindy and Nick Kidder. Uh, for those of our guests, uh, Cindy and her husband Mike uh, were sent out from our church to Belize. Belize. <laughs> it took me a minute to figure out where I was. Um, they, Cindy has come back. Cindy and Nick came back for Ashley's graduation. They're here with us today. Um, she's going to share with us some of what's been going on down in Belize. So, Cindy, I will turn it over to you and take as much time as you need. So those of you that know me know that this is not me. <laughs> I don't like to be here. Um, but the first thing I want to say is, I don't know, not all of you know, but you guys have amazing prayer warriors. And after spending two weeks with my stepmom, I realized how little sometimes those prayer warriors feel. They don't realize how important they are. Because my stepmother is a prayer warrior, but she doesn't know it. And she's like, I wish I could do more. But you win the battles with your prayers. Mm -hmm. Lots of answer prayers. See it every day. Um, so thank you for your prayers. They are probably the best support that you could ever have. I mean, yes, money's needed, but prayers are how God moves. So, um, so there we are. I had a slideshow. Are we ready? Yep. I need something to guide me because I don't want to. <laughs> okay. So um, we used to be down south, in, and a lot of you knew Gills Point. We lived in a 14 by 20 square home, square foot home. Um, running water was optional. Um, we washed in the creek, we scrubbed wash, we cooked on fire. Um, but God has moved us from there. We moved into the city in Eight Mile, and most of you knew that. Um, and in Eight Mile, you know, we lived in a pretty comfortable home. Running water was guaranteed. <laughs> we even had a washer. <laughs> um, but um, there was a lot of battles in Eight Mile, um, to the point where we almost packed up and moved home. But we had these four beautiful children that we'd promised to keep safe. So moving home wasn't exactly an option. So in this process, God put it on somebody's heart that they needed to find a home for us. And we looked all around us, convinced we weren't going to uproot the kids again. We were going to stay. Well, now we're in Corazal, Belize, which is way north totally different culture. We were in the Creole culture before, um, which is Creole is, um, so you, it's British and the African slaves, when they got mixed, Creole. So we were in the Creole culture before, drumming and rhythms. Now we're in Corazal, which is more mestizo. So Spanish is prevalent. Um, also the Mayan culture is very heavy. Um, they call it kitchen Spanish. It's not actually Mexican Spanish or formal Spanish. It's kitchen Spanish because of the Kachiki Mayan. Um, it's the local term for it. So Corazon Belize, that's the bay. We can walk a mile and a half and be in these beautiful blue waters. Kids love to spend their weekends there. Um, and um, so Corazon is our new home. Um, if you can keep going. Yeah. So Corazon, as I was saying, is way up top. Um, just right, we're literally nine more miles south of Mexico. Um, so we've got a lot of the Mexican Spanish culture in there. And Corazal, unlike the rest of Belize, has beautiful parks and public spaces. And we don't have trash on the street and clean yards and things like that. You know, it's, it's like a whole new world. Um, so. We ended up in Corozal just because of that's where God placed us, and keep, keep, I don't know, sorry. Let's go to the next. Mestizo, I was telling you, more Spanish culture. Um, those are the traditional Mayan Mestizo dresses. Um, they are literally white dresses, very simply made, but that's all hand embroidered. And in the market, we do have the markets, you know, you hear, it, uh, we have formal markets where you can get your packaged meat now. 
but you actually can go to the farmer's market and you have your cow hanging there and they have cut off a hunk and you take it home. So we have both sides. But um, there's a lady there that sells shoes and she sits there and makes these dresses and tablecloths and she, you can just sit there and watch her embroider it and sell her wares. So this is our family. Um, that's all our kids. We got, everybody got to come home for Christmas this year, which was a huge blessing. So you see all the kids, Leanne, Nick, Ashley. In the middle of everybody is Jerry Ann with an unusual smile. Jerry Ann um, is very sensitive and she walks around with a grimace or a scowl and cries most of the time. Um, then you got Whitney next to her. Um, she reminds me of my older sister, Heidi. Um, she is very strong-willed and stubborn, which actually suits her well because life has been hard and God has gotten her heart and she is bound and determined to do good things. Shaniqua is next to her. Shaniqua is full of life, full of energy, and never stops smiling. She's always bubbly and she gets angry, but it quickly turns into a, her smiley face. Um, then the smallest one is Jerome. Jerome came to us. He couldn't look any. They're, these are all siblings, by the way. All four of them. Um, share the same mom. Jerome is um, the youngest. Um, and when he came to us, he wouldn't look anybody in the eye, and he rarely lifted his head. He was always almost in a fetal position constantly. And you can see that's changed. He's a bubbling Henri. Nick will tell you, Henri, 11-year-old little brother that likes to annoy him. <laughs> so that's our family. We actually just added one more short-termer. Um, her name is Aaliyah. She's 14. It was supposed to be till Friday, <coughs> and now it's till the end of July. So <laughs> we'll see how that works out. Um, and we can keep... So just more pictures of the kids. Like I said, Shaniqua never stops smiling. And it's always a ham. So this is the house God blessed us with. <laughs> and as you can see from the pictures, well, it was a bank repo. There was a family living in here, and the story has a story of its own. It was actually built by missionary teams. Um, and um, long story, but this is the outside of the house before, and there we'll show the inside. So the, this is the inside of the house as we're working on it. We started in the house, um, had 10 layers of this floor covering called Marley. Um, it's a little bit thicker than shelf paper, and a lot of the people use it because it's very inexpensive and they replace it every year. This family didn't ever replace it. They just laid the next layer. So we had 10 layers of Miley with our bug, bug colonies underneath it. Um, so that was the house. The staircase was barely serviceable when we moved in. Um, and this first bathroom here that you see, the, just the open thing, that, there was a toilet there. And Mike called that the preceptic. Because the plumbing wasn't done right, there was no wax ring, and the toilet was concreted in. And so when we popped the toilet, yeah, that whole floor was filled with sewage. Yeah. A couple of gallons of bleach later. Yeah. Um, we opened up some of the rooms. The house originally had, well, actually, originally had six bedrooms, and it now has six bedrooms, but they've kind of moved. Um, so we opened a couple walls, and that's the pictures there. Um, actually, this house, you got the story of this house. The people who bought this house live in Houston, Texas. God put it on our, their heart to give us a place rent free, and they were in the process of building this house when they lost their properties. Mm. In the storm, yeah. Mm. And God has blessed them, and they're still doing well because their gift is giving. Mm -hmm. Hands and feet, right? We all have our part, and so their houses are being restored, and they're doing well, but in the middle of this, this they were uprooted. Six feet of water. Um, so that was the house before, um, house after. We have um, 
glass windows, <coughs> burglar bars, which is important. Um, we actually had somebody trying to come through our burglar bars um, into the house when we were first there. The fence is new, um, but they were, I don't, we don't know who it was. Um, they, they got met by Mike's poor puppy, um, Duke. We were given as a thank you gift a pit bull puppy. And Duke was what they met as they were trying to shimmy through the burglar bars. Yeah. Um, so this is the inside of the house. I live in a normal, modern American house, washer dryer, um, beautiful kitchen. Um, that table, it was something that Mike picked up at, um, from one of the local Mennonites. He saw a little coffee table and he's like, that's my kitchen table. And he asked him to make it. So that is an eight foot by 10 foot table, or no, four foot by 10 foot. And um, it will seat, comfortably seat 14. It can seat more, we, yeah. Um, so the bathroom, I showed a picture of the bathroom. That's the bathroom as it sits now. Um, Mike did most of the plumbing. Um, he found out he was allergic to the, something in the dirt or the concrete down there. So he did not do any of the concrete work. Um, so this is one of our projects. We made storage underneath the things for the kids' school books and stuff. And the extra wood became benches um, for storage. Um, you don't waste. So the wood became storage benches. Um, this is our new home. Um, we started going to this church two weeks before the pastor left, unbeknownst to us. Um, I've actually found out a lot more about the truth of what happened, and it's, he, he left for a good reason. He was asked to resign by the elders. Um, but we ended up there two weeks before the pastor left. Um, but this, the ladies here are amazing. I have a wonderful sister group and fellowship here, and Mike has a nice men's group to, to fellowship with. Mike, parents said pastor left, nobody else to leave. So Mike is now back to teaching and leading worship because the church split. When the pastor left, some people, while, while some people viewed that he shouldn't have been removed, so we had a church split. So with lots of love, that's what I said. The ladies are amazing. And this is our ladies group. We celebrate birthdays once a month, and we celebrate, and we have lots of fun and laughter. Everything. Um, our kids all had to enter new schools, which is a little bit difficult for them. Our kids don't speak any Spanish. I know more Spanish than they do, and that's really bad. <laughs> um, but most of the kids will speak Spanish to each other because they speak Spanish home. Um, the schools are English. They go to Roman Catholic school, so it's a little bit challenging with some of the things that they get taught. Um, lots of things that they get taught in the schools are challenging. Um, they, besides that, the high school there, um, that's where Whitney goes, this is Corazal Community. Shaniqua will be going there next year. She just got her acceptance letter. We were worried because she didn't actually meet all the requirements. Um, she doesn't really like school much. Nick is actually going to Whitmore High School or online, um, which will give him a, an opportunity to stay home till he finishes high school, if he so chooses. Um, but I was talking about schools and the things they teach. Whitney was taking, um, they do um, their classes, their health, and they're going through their, some of the challenges we come, she comes home and they're learning about drug, drug education. And her teacher tells them that if you're drunk, you can follow it with cocaine and oh, it'll take care of your hangover. Oh, <laughs> and this is, you know, being taught to 14 year olds. So, as well as, you know, all the ways not to get pregnant. So we deal with a lot of challenges with the school system. Um, they're foster kids, so they have to be there. There's no option. Um, so this is our new home. That's where our kids are going to school. Pray for them. Um, pray for us. <laughs> any questions? Any? I'm trying to give you an overview, but. How much more is the high school than the? <laughs> um, high school, just the, okay, so the Roman Catholic, 
the primary schools are public private. Um, best way to explain it is the teachers are paid by the government, but nothing else. So you still pay tuition and fees and uniforms. Um, so it's about $300 a year for the, the primary school kids. And the high schoolers is, um, well, the just to get them in the door is about 900 and then you have to pay books and all. The, and there's always a new fee and always a new fundraiser, just like in regular schools, right? There's always another fundraiser. I made over 900 cupcakes this year. <laughs> because they found out I can make cupcakes. But, um, but yeah, no, high school is expensive. Um, but hopefully, um, Shaniqua social worker just said that she's filling out the paperwork, so they actually might be giving us some of that. Social um, foster care in Belize doesn't work like foster care in the States. They come to us as is, and it's our responsibility. Um, yeah. <laughs> High school is actually not considered an option, or um, a requirement. They're only mandatory to be in school till 14. So high school is, you know, optional for these kids. So a sixth grade education is what the nation runs on. How many drop out then after they get that age? Is there quite a drop off? Um, a lot of parents, I'm it? saying 900, and that seems small to us. The union did the minimum wage in Belize is $15 a day, and most people don't work official jobs. So I was told in our area, a domestic worker who will work 10 hours a day is lucky to get $7 a day. And so you're talking $900 plus books and fees, you can't afford it. They don't not go because they don't want to, they go don't go because they can't afford it. How did they pay for it then in the grade school? The grade schools, because the te because it's mandatory, the kids, once they're enrolled, they can't really kick the kids out whether they pay or not. <laughs> and there's government schools. Um, but with government schools, you get teachers that have failed to get jobs elsewhere. And it is one of the best, teaching is one of the best paying jobs. The government actually spends the most amount of their money even though they're corrupt on the government, on the education system, because they do actually value it, but none of my four, or one of my four, could read when they came to us. Jerome didn't even know his letters. He was eight, so. And they have to test to get into the, the, the They have to test to get into the high school. It also goes on their grades. Um, and um, they actually had to, in cortisol, we had to test to get them into schools. So we actually, this was like the third school <laughs> that we tried. So they d did not test high enough to get into a lot of schools. So you said Nick is gonna do high school online, so he doesn't have to pay that money? He, he, no, we pay, we pay, it, we pay that, we actually pay more than that for his school. But it is a U.S. school, so he will have an accredited diploma when he finishes, so he can go on to college or whatnot when he comes back. Whatever God calls for him. How are the kids adjusting? They're doing well now. Um, our first, it, it felt like we went back to the beginning for our first six months in the new place. Um, we started out with, um, we, we were done with stealing, we were done with food hoarding, um, we were almost done wedding beds. Um, and so when we came to the new place, they all came back. I mean, literally hundreds of dollars because we were paying you have to pay cash for everything, most everything down there. So, so Mike wasn't locking everything again because you know we hadn't had issues, and so literally hundreds of dollars went. And you know, since the locals, if it was a, a local child with local parents, they wouldn't question it. But since they're with the white people, uh -huh. they, they, they might we're just giving them an extravagant allowance, right? <laughs> uh -huh. 
there's a lot of racism. Um, it's something I never really experienced growing up in the Pacific Northwest. I don't really experience racism. The blacks hate the Hispanics. Hispanics hate the blacks. Everybody hates the Chinese. And white people are just there for money. <laughs> but, so it's a different. Being cursed out because you won't give somebody a job is a different experience altogether. So did your kids have that, um, did they get to see their mother or? Um, it goes through human services like it would here. Um, right now they have, for their own safety, no communication with their mother. Um, we, I try not to talk about this, but their mom was raising them like gypsies. They moved from place to place. Um, the daughter that's always sad, before she moved into our house, she was nine years old when she moved in. She'd lived in 10 different houses with all sorts of family. She was used as a medium for voodoo. Um, she's known things that adults shouldn't know in her lifetime. Um, but yeah, um, one of the things, you know, brothels, that's one of the, we have to work on our Spanish because they bring, Belize brings in girls from all over the world, and they go from Belize through Mexico or the Gulf up into the States, and it's, it's something that's it's, it's culturally, we have to deal with it on a daily basis. That, I mean, you hear about the sex trafficking here, but you would never see somebody on Facebook in an open chat forum complaining about her shipment of girls being too old and too ugly. So, and if you are seeing that, come talk to me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you have to, we report it as we see it, but there's not much we can do else than that. But that's a huge need for the, um, for the care in there is because they get these girls and they need safe places for them. And then they try to get them back to their home countries. Where, yeah. So is there a lot of black magic? Buddha, like you mentioned, is there a lot of it? Is it pretty prominent, like in some of the other countries? It is very prominent, and sometimes they do it without even realizing it. Like in the churches, you'll see little babies with red ribbons around their um, arms or red bracelets. That's to keep evil spirits away, they, or evil stares and hexes. And they also pin garlic on their babies till they're about six months to protect them. So yes, you see it even inside the churches, and you have to fight through that at, with love, because you know this is their culture, and they don't know any better, and they don't realize that they're. That's just how they're raised. They've done it since they were small. So yes, we do see it. And when I asked for prayers a while back, Jerry Ann started peeing the bed again. She's our. She's one of our. She's our last bedwetter. We've been almost. Gonna, but anyways, almost there. Um, but she was seeing a demon. The full out claws and yeah, was standing in her doorway. So she wouldn't get up to go to the bathroom. And, um, but they welcome that sometimes. You guys know Charlie Charlie went through the States too, right? Do you know what Charlie Charlie is? It's kind of like Ouija board, um, but it's with a pencil and they call him Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, it's going through the, you don't know about it, the kids do. The kids do. So, no, 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 you don't. You don't mess with it. Uh, anyways, um, it went through the schools big time, and it's still going through. So once you expose yourself to it, you're welcoming that door, and we deal with that. Our kids aren't sealed, most of them. So they bring stuff home all the time. So home is not a sanctuary, you know. <laughs> It's a war zone. Anything else? God bless you for dealing with you. Dealing with you. I am just where God planted me. We're all missionaries. 
And I don't know, you know, being in the mountains makes you homesick. Because <laughs> we've got palm trees. And I, I won't, I won't, you know, I like my... I like my mangoes, but I give them up. <laughs> How's the weather down there compared to some of the other? We, when it gets cold, you know, we're wearing sweaters at 60. Um, because that's cold. We're pretty much 80 year round. It doesn't get cooler at night. It's 80. And it might get up to like 100 in the summer. Um, but it's pretty much 80 to 85, night through non, uh, night through morning, all day long, 80 degrees with 80% humidity. So we a lot of rain. Uh, in some places, yes, we're tropical, so um, we get a lot of rain. Um, cortisol is, for some reason, doesn't get as much. Um, it's one of the lowest rainfalls in the country, but it is rainy season, so. Our house actually used to flood um, before all the improvements. That if if I showed you all the pictures of the house, you actually step a foot down into every part of the house because the house was built on low ground, and so we have um, water barriers everywhere and French drain systems that we dug. And I actually have a garden. This is the first time in Belize that I actually have produce that's bearing and not being stolen. Um, <laughs> um, well, because I had tomatoes and stuff in Gales Point in a pot, and they would go as fast as they came on the vines. Um, but I have, I had watermelons, and they, those did get pulled up, but I have cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers, um, mushmelons, or cantaloupe, and I have a garden. That, that may not be important to all of you, but that is my prayer sanctuary. You, some people have a prayer room. I go to my garden. I learned a long time ago after having small ones that you go in the garden, nobody messes with you. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to help weed. <laughs> so the garden is a huge thing. It not only provides for the family with the food, um, but it, it gives me my quiet space. And I do have pretty things too. I have roses and local flowers and things like that. Thyme, papaya, pineapple. No mangoes in our yard. Are you still um, trying to adopt those four kids? Um, well, we are in the process. Um, our friends, when we were in the city, when we left the Eight Mile Church after the contentious woman issue, um, <laughs> when we left that church and we went to fellowship at Calvary, and that was another missionary plant church. They were eight years in their adoption. Oh. It took them eight years to finish. So we're looking at that by the time the adoption's finished, our kids will be grown. Mm. So it's, in, it's there. It's just, it's also $3,000 a child. And when you're looking at $900 a year for school, 3,000 puts them through high school pretty much near. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know. <laughs> so that you can't, you couldn't bring him to the United uh, States? And... It's not necessarily that we can't because the couple that we were with actually, if everything's slow, we just got their legal for their country. Um, they just got their birth certificates, their social security cards, which is how you go see the doctor. And it's been three years, so um, we're talking adoption, it all has to go through the system, it takes long. Um, so they would have to get passports, and then they would do authorization letters, and then you have to apply for their green card, you know, their visas and things like that, which shouldn't be an issue, even though on the news they say they blocked Belize, like I said, human trafficking, the only, there's only one visa that was blocked for Belize, and that is the one that they were using for human trafficking. Um, so they did it for a reason. Don't let anybody fool you. It was good. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, no. I mean, it is, they can't come to the States. You're also looking at the cost of it. I mean, we've always been blessed. I've flown from Belize to the States when it's necessary for emergency. I don't know how God does it. 
I've flown as little as $250 round trip. Don't ask me how, because, well, I, we know how, God, but 250 is unheard of. But to get our whole family up here, you're talking a lot of money. And typical travel time is 30, 26 to 30 hours. Because of small airport to small airport, you spend 10 hours here and five hours there. And, um, and our kids' behaviors, I don't know if we could travel with them. It's hard enough to go across country to visit things and educate them, let alone flying across international. We have one that will, our um, Darianne will actually throw temper tantrums as if she was two. Um, when you're severely neglected and abused, the brain waves don't connect. So when th she gets overwhelmed, she literally will fall out on the floor, kicking and screaming tantrums. And that can last for an hour. How long have you had it? Um, we were on year four. 2014. So, they're big changes, you know. I don't see it as much as people who have come and gone do. But they, these are kids that had no future, that were be lucky to reach age 20. Um, they're older sisters, because I've only got four of eight. Um, Three of them are back with mom, even though they're not supposed to be. But in Gail's point, social services is too afraid for their lives to go back in. Um, that's where we used to live, you know. We don't, you don't tell family that, you know, social services and the local government won't go in, into the place you're living. My dad actually visited, so he knows. <laughs> I can tell a little story, but when we were going down there, uh, we went from bus from Cancun down, and when when we were entering the country, uh, uh, they asked where we were going, and we said uh, down the Gales Point, and they said there are lots better places to go. <laughs> 